So you wanna create. What you create doesn't really matter, but you just wanna start making something. And you wanna start making it well. Well, my name is Brandon, and I am a freelance editor, content manager, YouTube person, and just like a lot of you guys out there, I am a one-man team. And when you're trying to tackle all the different aspects of content creation, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So what I've done is I've put together a list of all the software and resources I use on a daily basis to help you get started. And some of those resources include things like Riverside, which happens to be the sponsor of today's video, but more on them later. Let's tackle one of the big ones first, editing. What editing software do I use? Well, if you're new to the channel, uh, I use DaVinci. I use DaVinci Resolve from Blackmagic Design. The reason I started using DaVinci is because it is free. There is a completely free version. DaVinci Resolve is gonna offer all of the essentials and more for anything that you're doing when it comes to editing and even motion graphics, animation, color correction. And it's actually what I still use today. I still use DaVinci. Now, like I said, there is a free version and then you can also opt in to do a one-time payment for their studio version, which is their paid version. But the nice thing about DaVinci Resolve is once you pay for the software once, that's it. So a couple years ago, I did the one-time payment and I haven't had to pay a single dime cents for any of the updates or upgrades to the software. One of the main arguments that I hear against DaVinci Resolve is that industry is using Adobe. And I mean, that is very true, but what I would say is, again, if you're just starting to learn how to edit, I don't stress what everybody else is using. Just get started, learn, Figure out what you need to know, what you need to pick up, and I promise you all of those skills that you learn will translate over to Adobe, Final Cut, or even Avid uh, at some point if you do decide you want to transfer. The DaVinci community is also growing right now, and there's a lot of really good YouTubers out there that can help you get started. Somebody like Mr. Alex Tech will be a great resource for you. He not only does tutorials, but he gives news updates on the latest that's happening in DaVinci. and. The man is a, a true gift to humanity because he's developed free tools that work with DaVinci Resolve that make your life so much easier. I cannot tell you how many times I use his magic animate tool within DaVinci. Um, I would highly recommend checking him out. Kind of in a similar vein, check out Patrick Sterling. Patrick will do similar things. You know, he'll update you on things that happen within DaVinci. But the thing I really appreciate about his channel is he will take a deeper dive into the hows, the specifics of how the cogwheels turn within the program. Also, I cannot recommend checking out Dax's channel. My man is an absolute wizard in DaVinci Resolve. He's hilarious. His tutorials are probably some of the cleanest and most informative when it comes to producing creative effects for your videos. If you haven't stumbled upon Peach, PJ, the goat, the godfather, the, I, the legend, his tutorials and breakdowns of DaVinci Resolve will blow your mind with some of the things the program is uh, capable of. So yeah, definitely check out Peach, PJ. I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Don't know if it's Peach or PJ, I'm so sorry. All right, so we have video down. What about graphics? How are we gonna make thumbnails and banners and logos and all those different things for your video? This is what I'll tell you. There's a couple programs out there that you can use that aren't gonna be subscription-based. Uh, one of them is gonna be GIMP. GIMP is free. You can do most of the things that you would wanna do when it comes to creating and manipulating images. So like color correction and resizing things and cropping, and you know, some of the basics. But GIMP is gonna lack in a lot of smart features, I'll call them, where something like Photoshop is really gonna excel. Now I'm not a massive fan of the Adobe software suite, but I will say that I do use Photoshop. I think it's extremely powerful, extremely handy. It has the capability of working with smart objects and camera filters and when you resize things it'll do some like pixel interpolation so that things don't become pixelated when you enlarge them there's just a lot of features within photoshop that you don't realize are extremely nice until you leave photoshop photoshop is gonna have a monthly subscription i think it's like 20 21 bucks if you were to just do photoshop per month but if you end up working with graphics at all and you had to choose one software to work with i I would recommend Photoshop. Now there is another alternative to Photoshop and it's called Affinity Photo. Affinity is, I would say, Adobe's biggest competitor on the image graphic side of things. Where Adobe will have Adobe Illustrator, Affinity has Affinity Designer. The nice thing about Affinity and their software suite is kind of similar to DaVinci, it's just a one-time payment. So what I might recommend is if you're just starting to do some graphic stuff, 
Maybe start with Gimp, just open it up, start playing with hue, saturation, composition, where you lay out text, you know, learn some of those fundamentals. And then if you want to ramp it up, go into Photoshop or try out Affinity Photo. Now, if you've gotten to this point and you're thinking, this feels like I have a lot to learn and a lot to pick up just to get started. And yeah, it can be a little bit overwhelming, but that's where Riverside is here to help. Riverside is basically your own at-home studio and it does all the work for you. Riverside started as an online studio that basically was set up to help you record high quality interviews. So for instance, I help produce a couple of podcasts and one of the issues that we always run into is that we have to use some kind of third-party software to record both the video and audio. And then when I pull that footage and start to use it, nothing is synced up and the quality ends up being really poor because again, we're using something that's recording in like 720p and the end result doesn't end up looking as good or sound as good as it should. But with Riverside, all I have to do is set up a studio, send an invite link to whoever I'm working with and we both can record high quality footage and video and then Riverside will automatically sync the video and audio for you and it will separate everything into individual tracks so that if you want to do any kind of post-process editing, it's already there, good to go for you. And here's where I think Riverside really excels because it'll take care of everything for you after you've done your recording. So. For instance, it's gonna automatically transcribe my footage so that if I wanted to set up captions, it's there. And it now has an AI platform that will provide you cut downs and short form edits of your recording. So now you don't have to spend time going through, sorting through footage. Riverside is gonna automatically recommend that footage for you to use. And then it has a built-in editor that you can use to fine tune your short form. And that's things like text-based editing. So if there's like a certain sentence you don't want to use or include, just highlight the text, delete it, and that part of the video is gone. It's also got a silence remover, which is an extremely useful and powerful feature. And you can share your videos with an outside editor collaborator so that they can preview and work with that footage as well. And now you can actually use code Wampus to get 15% off. That's right. I have my own code, which is pretty cool. Now there is a free version as well if you would like to just test it out, but what I would say to this is at some point, if you're wanting to take your content journey seriously, you will have to invest into your business, your content business. After you've used Riverside, I just feel like it's a no brainer to use it. It's something that I now use regularly for helping out with the podcast that I produce and my own short form content because now you can actually upload your own videos as well. And Riverside will transcribe your own locally recorded videos and provide cut downs of your own locally recorded video. So if Riverside is something that you're curious about and you wanna check out, there'll be a link in the description. All right, so those are the heavy hitters out of the way. What about just some useful resources and tools? Well, let's talk about stock media. These are gonna be things that you include in your video that help it stand out. This could be B-roll that you weren't able to record. This could be motion graphics that you don't have time to develop. As far as music goes, I normally recommend using Epidemic. And now Epidemic is not sponsoring this video, but I just, it's honestly the website I end up using the most. There's a couple of reasons why I prefer using them. One is because I just think their music sounds good. A lot of times when you go and find copyright free music or beats or whatever, it just ends up sounding uh, pretty corny, but Epidemic has a really good track list. There are some producers on there that are putting out incredible music. And the other nice thing about their website is that you can link your YouTube channel, your Twitch page, your TikTok, and it will automatically clear any copyright flags of your music. So you don't gotta worry about licenses or anything like that. Just literally link your YouTube channel, use their music, and you're good to go. A couple of other uh, really useful websites when it comes to audio and sound effects. Soundly is one. Soundly uh, will provide a lot of sound effects that you can use in your videos. It has a desktop application and the nice thing about their desktop app is if you search for a sound effect and you find it within their desktop application, all you gotta do is highlight the section you want and then drag and drop it in. They do only have a limited library of sound effects though before you have to pay to access some of them, but even their free library is really big, so that's really nice. Uh, there's also a website called Sounds Resource and this is kind of a fun one because it just has a bunch of like iconic video game noises. I work in the gaming space, so that's one that I use a lot. And if you're ever wondering where people get like the super meme noises, like the, this one Hello there. or this one oh. from a website called Tuna, 
tuna voice mod they've got a bunch of user uploaded like i don't know vine meme sound effects so shout out tuna now the next set of websites are going to be things that kind of just offer everything they'll have video images sound effects graphics templates all that good stuff and there's a few out there. Pixabay is one that's really nice because it's free. I've used their music a couple times and the music is pretty good and they have some stock video and images that you can download. It's really easy to use. But that leaves some of the, the big paid stock media websites. And the ones that I think are the most prominent are gonna be Artlist, Storyblocks, and Envato Elements. And there might be one I'm leaving out there, but, but what I would recommend is either using Storyblocks or Envato. I don't think you can go wrong with Artlist. If you got a free trial there and you want to check it out and you like it, go ahead and give it a shot. I use Storyblocks for a couple of years and it's really nice. I think Storyblocks probably has the best video selection if you're looking for high quality shots of cities and landscapes and I don't know, just like very specific things. But I ended up switching to Envato because they just have everything. And I really mean everything. And the price you pay for what you get out is so useful. And they not only have stock video, their stock video selection is really good. They have stock images, they have video templates. So if you wanna make like certain effects and do like a logo animation, they'll have those. They also have like a 3D object library, which is extremely nice. It's a little bit misleading because you don't download like an OBJ file or another 3D file, it's just, a 3D object that you can spin to get a certain angle, but still really nice. They also have fonts. Like they have an entire font library that you can use. So yeah, I I just find that I end up using Envato a lot. I won, I want pet peeve with them and Envato, if for some reason you watch this video, can you please make it so that when I download something from your website, it doesn't automatically zip it. There are some times where I go to their website and I'll download a sound effect. And for whatever reason, it always zips just like one mp3 file and then i have to go extract it and use it can we just can we just let me download the mp3 that would make my life mm, so much better let's talk a couple things that you might not think about when it comes to just staying organized and managing yourself in the content world one of those things is going to be a project management tool and if you never use a project management tool essentially the purpose of them is to keep track of the things you have going on. There's things as simple as like to do this, which is just like a running to do list of all the things you have got going on. Or there's programs like Asana, which are more meant for like team based project management. But these are the three that I see most often in the content world. One is Trello. Trello is I think it's called Kanban style project manager. And what that means is you set up rows of categories and as you continue to progress on whatever you're working on you can slide your task across those rows so you know you have like to do in progress and done notion is another one that i see a lot i don't use notion just because it tends to have more stuff than i need there's like a certain point when it comes to time management and project management where i feel like you spend more time setting things up and clicking buttons and categorizing things than you do just like setting up a task. So if you're somebody who likes to just be overly organized and have complete control of how things are managed, I would recommend Notion. There are templates out there that you can use for Notion as well. But what I actually use is ClickUp. ClickUp is kind of like the, uh, the flubber of the project management world. It kind of just, it does everything. You can really set it up to work however you would like to work. So if you like using to-do lists, it's got a way to do to-do lists. If you like using the Trello boards, it's got those. If you like doing Gantt charts or scheduling things on a calendar, it's got all those. And I just feel like the user interface is really clean. It's really simple. It's definitely more powerful than Trello. Um, and it's like a step below Notion. All right, real quick, let's just talk finances. As you start to make videos and create content, if it's your goal to make some money, eventually you're gonna have to start separating your business expenses and income from your personal ones. I'm not an expert on how to do that and I'm not giving out any financial advice or business advice, but there are tools out there that can help you categorize your finances so that your life is really easy once tax season comes around. If you're looking for something free, I think there's a software called Wave. 
I think it's like you can link stuff and it does a pretty good job of it. But what I would recommend using and what I switched to recently is QuickBooks. There's nothing exciting about it. There's nothing flashy about it. It just works. It works well. It's what most accounts use. They use the Intuit uh, software suite. So if you do need to send stuff to an account at the end, QuickBooks is already set up. You do have to pay a monthly subscription to use it, but if you're going to be spending money on your business, just use QuickBooks. I promise you it'll save you so much headache down the road, especially if you're an editor like me and you got to send out invoices like QuickBooks has a built in invoicing software. You can customize the invoices. It's probably one of the biggest things I regret not using sooner. All right. This is the back half. This is just some fun stuff that I use regularly and some quick tips and advice for you that you might find helpful. As far as fonts go, if you're making your own thumbnails and stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and just, these are all fonts I use regularly when it comes to subtitles, captions, thumbnail titles. They're nice, they're easy. Um, yeah, keep it basic. If you don't have access to Photoshop or Affinity and you're having trouble removing the background from images and masking out things, there's a website called remove.bg that will remove backgrounds for you. If you're curious how your video thumbnail and title are gonna look when you post before YouTube, Thumbsup.tv will give you a nice preview on all the different scales. So desktop version, mobile version, that's pretty nice. Local Remover is a nice website because it'll separate the voice from any instrumentals or audio recording. That's a nice website. If you're looking for particular clips to throw into your videos, there's websites like playphrase.me that'll search through movie libraries. And if you have a particular phrase, it'll look for that phrase in a movie that you can use to download. There's websites like yarn.io that will search through movies and TV shows. And there's another website I think called Blipsy that'll do something similar, but I think Blipsy leaves watermarks on all of its videos. Jitter is a cool website because it's got templates for things like subscription animations and text message pop-ups and I think a lot of them are free, don't quote me on that, but I think I think you're just limited on the final download size. Like I think you can only download in 720p if you're using the free version, but that's what I've been using for a while and it works fine. 11 labs.io is nice if you're looking to do some text-to-speech. They've got a bunch of different voices. A website that I find myself actually using more often than not, and this is kind of a random one, is calloftdutymaps.com. I edit Call of Duty videos and calloftdutymaps.com has screenshots from all the different maps from all the different Call of Duties and they are high res, really nice. And if you need inspiration, there's websites like frameseat.app, Logo Book and Dribble. Frameseat I think has cinematic stills that you can pull from for inspiration. Logo Book can give you some logo design inspiration and dribble with three Bs will give you some motion graphic inspiration. But thank you guys for watching and listening to my list. If you're looking for some editing help in videos or just something else on my channel, I'll leave something here. But I hope this helped and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.